Hey everyone, it's Connor here from Durham Hearing Specialists. I hope you're doing well and welcome back to a very interesting case. What we have in this left ear is a cholesteatoma, which is an abnormal, a growing abnormal accumulation of dead skin, typically invading the middle ear space and mastoid system. Now the cholesteatoma, um, th this sort of golden mass sack pearl of dead skin that you see here, I don't think that this necessarily can be interpreted as a cholesteatoma. This is a, a mass of dead skin that's grown out of the eardrum and uh, it's actually attached in, a, in an unusual place. It's attached to the handle of the malleus. But um, I don't think that this would classify as a cholesteatoma because it's not, it's not in the middle ear space. It's not really large enough to be causing any damage per se. I don't think that this is the real problem, which is why I'm happy to remove it. But uh, the cholesteatoma is actually hiding behind that, and that will need to be dealt with by an ENT surgeon. Now, there are a few complications to this case, which I'll explain. But um, once I remove this, this dead skin mass, then you'll, you'll be able to see the full extent of the, the complexity here, which is that the eardrum has been sucked backwards. I mean, it already looks abnormal from what you can see, but there's a big old retraction pocket hiding behind this dead skin. And then you'll actually see uh, some yellow keratin actually kind of collecting in there. And that is, that is the true nature of cholesteatoma. So what we're gonna do is just very gently with suction, I know this looks like a dream job for crocodile forceps, but uh, you, can, you can see, if you look at the sort of bottom right of the eardrum, see how it's flexing back and forth? I'm keeping my eye on that. And if I was to kind of just go in gung-ho with, with crocodile forceps and just rip it off, probably would cause damage. And I really don't want to cause any trauma whatsoever in this case, because the ear is already quite abnormal looking. Um, so although the suction is you know, I'm, I'm almost doing the procedure with one hand tied behind my back. I don't mind making slow progress because slow and steady wins the race. So in terms of the background here, um, the patient is relatively asymptomatic. She has recently developed a feeling of fullness in this ear, which has prompted her to come to, come to see us. Um, a little bit of discomfort in the ear from time to time and uh, some hearing loss, that's it. And so nothing to ring alarm bells. You know, when a patient rings the clinic with symptoms like that, we don't, you know, we don't think of cholesteatoma. We tend to think of earwax impaction, eustachian tube dysfunction, you know, maybe even just sort of, you know, presbyacusis, which is age-related hearing loss, or something that's easy to explain, you know, something more likely than this. You know, this is unlikely. And normally when an ear looks like this, which is, you know, definitely at first glance not normal, they would have usually at this point filtered through to ENT. You know, they would have seen a nurse practitioner or the GP or someone who would have already picked up on this way earlier. So it's very rare that an ear that looks like this will filter through to audiology. You can see, just I'm moving it here, you can see the umbo, which is the center of the eardrum, flexing back and forth. And that's a sign that it is actually attached to the malleus. Um, so that, those are the symptoms. The background is quite innocuous. So, you know, she had grommets in this ear as a child, I think two or three sets. Okay, that maybe makes sense in that that suggests an underlying eustachian tube issue. So the middle ear isn't being ventilated, which means that the eardrum gets sucked backwards. Okay. But lots of children have grommets. So that's not necessarily a precursor to cholesteatoma. She had ear infection once. That's it. It's a fairly clean history. Um, she hasn't had any ENT operations like adenoids or tonsils out or anything like that, just grommets. So, um, and the, th the third thing that makes this case very interesting, actually, and, and, and this is why I think ENT, I'm not sure what ENT are going to do here, because this patient has tachycardia, as a, and tachycardia is a fast heart rate. Bradycardia is slow heart rate. Tachycardia is anything above 100 beats per minute. I think. So this patient, her resting heart rate is anything from 120 to 180. And that is a consequence of quite serious heart complications um, caused by COVID. And this patient is a young nurse. So I have, I have no reason to suspect that she's misinterpreted her medical history. You know, she's very switched on. So um, she's not been able to have certain medical scans and medical treatments because of this tachycardia. 
so I'm not sure she'll be able to, uh, I mean, it, it, Vic, if you're watching, Vic Veer, if you're watching this, I'm assuming the normal routine would be to get a CT scan and then put the patient under general anesthesia and then cut round the eardrum, create a tympanomatal flap, lift it up and then clear out the cholesteatoma, plus or minus any sort of plasty that you see fit. But I'm not sure if that's possible. Is it possible? I don't know. Could, can this be somehow dealt with under local anesthesia or sedation? I'm not sure. Um, as I'm, interestingly, as I'm pulling down on this mass, you can see it's attached to, um, to the eardrum, by the, almost like this little stalk. It's very, very, very interesting, almost like a, a, a pendunculated polyp. And um, I th it, what's interesting is that I can understand, I, th I think there are a few different ways that cholesteatoma can form. And if you're interested to know more about cholesteatoma, I'll link you down in the description box below to one of Vic's videos where he explains it. But, um, you know, if you think of the eardrum as a sort of smoothish plane, you know, the, the, the skin of your ear canal and eardrum starts in the centre of the drum and then kind of radiate, kind of migrates out from the centre. And then when it reaches the perimeter of the eardrum, it migrates down and out of the ear canal. So it's like a conveyor belt system. And if there's like a, a you know, part of the eardrum is sucked backwards or there's like damage or an error, you know, like a, a little trench, you can understand that when the, the skin cells are moving across that smooth eardrum and then it gets to that trench, it'll go down into the trench and get lost and get stuck in there. And then that will accumulate and form a cholesteatoma. This here, that's a very good shot, actually. You can see how the skin cells, I think, are migrating outward from the center of the eardrum and then for some reason getting lost, you know, up that stalk and then into the center of the mass. I'm less confident about the explanation behind this because it's, um, it's actually attached to the lateral process of the malleus. So um, on the surface of the eardrum, that's, that's the bit that kind of sticks out. Um, so I don't know why it would form at that particular point. Very, very unusual. So there, so we've managed to remove the mass without causing any discomfort, bleeding, without disturbing anything, which is nice. And now we'll be able to see uh, what's behind that and that see that little bit of yellow right there that shouldn't be there that is dead skin collecting in the middle ear and that's cholesteatoma essentially what's unfortunate is that we don't know you know if it's just is it just that little yellow bit and that's it you know or is it you know a, a much larger mass it's impossible to tell what's also confusing to me is that I can't see the incus anywhere where is it? Surely, surely the arm of the Inca should be, you know, hanging down just, you know, just to the right or posterior to the malleus, you know, medially, of course, but it should be hanging down there. Where is it? Um, surely it can't have eroded. So just a quick Valsalva maneuver there. So what I've done is I've got the patient to pinch their nose and then try and blow through their nose. So air is going up the, the, the eustachian tube to the middle ear. That's good. But you can see that the retraction pocket is still there. So... Um, I'm not into, I, I, the incus appears to be absent unless I'm missing something. So if anyone can see that, Vic, if you can see where the incus is, please point it out to me. But very, very interesting case. I'm not sure um, what strategy ENT are going to take. But if I do hear an update, I will let you know exactly what's going on. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments section below and I will try my very best to get back to you. And of course, I will see you guys on the next video.